looks don't matter. It's all about confidence and personality. And even if looks do matter, I'm okay because I think I'm about a 7 or 8 out of 10 in looks anyway. There has to be a reason, unrelated to my looks, why I can't date the women to whom I'm heavily attracted. At worst, I'm a 6. There is no way I'm average looking or below. Anyway, surely being at least average looking is enough, right? It's said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but if you, along with most other people, think that the guy on the left is the more attractive, then this is proof that that saying is a comforting lie. How much do looks matter? Can having a lot of money improve a man's dating life? Does being high status allow you to be the selector of women? Looks, money, status. We'll look at how each of these affects a man's attractiveness and why. LMS. We'll also look at several truths that no one wants to acknowledge. I ran a fake but believable dating profile on online dating site Plenty of Fish or Poff using pictures of a good looking male model. I named him Carl. Within minutes of the profile going live, Carl was inundated with women messaging him. He averaged a new unsolicited message about every 10 minutes. The opening message was usually a reference to his good looks. You're hot, so gorgeous. Hello, handsome. You clicked on me because you thought I had a good personality? Well, no, I clicked on you because you're fucking hot. Carl's personality didn't seem to matter that much. If it's Carl's confidence that is attracting the women, why do they mention his looks? Is it just a coincidence that a good looking male model happens to get so many messages from women? It's often said that confidence is one of the most attractive traits that a man can have, but I prove this to be bullshit. I made Carl as unconfident as possible, but women were still attracted to him because he's good looking. Carl spoke to Amy. Hiya, how are you? Very single and pathetic. Hm, <laughs> you? Ha, huh. isn't everybody on here? I am single too. Duh. Ha, huh. dunno about pathetic. Notice how being single and pathetic isn't so much of a turn off when the guy is facially attractive. As with most of the girls that Carl spoke to, he got Amy's phone number. But when Amy didn't receive the phone call that Carl promised, she was pissed. Must have missed that call last night then, eh? Well, Butrin is a drug prescribed to people suffering bouts of depression. So it's probably not the best thing to bring up when you're trying to create a good first impression with a woman. That is, of course, unless you're good looking. Carl spoke to Daniela. I wish I could travel that much, but I'm broke and kind of depressed too. The well Butrin helps, but not much. Anyway, it would be good to get to know you. Ha ha, good. Are you a propane addicted then? Zoloft is also good for this. He <laughs> he. After a sexy, seductive discussion about antidepressants, Carl was able to draw the phone number. If it isn't as easy for you to draw a woman's phone number, maybe it's nothing to do with your approach. Just maybe you might not be as attractive as you tell yourself. The messages from women kept coming, but I wanted to push the boundaries even further. How much could Carl get away with if he had various unattractive personality traits, appeared lacking in confidence, displayed zero game, and even came across with very little social awareness? Are women that influenced by looks? The results were eye-opening. Carl spoke to LJ. Shit pictures, I mean just really awful. Nice. I'd love to see some not taken from above at an angle. Why bother messaging if you're not interested, prick? And while we're on the topic, I'd love to see some not pulling that ridiculous facial expression. Who said I wasn't interested? So you insult girls when you're interested in them? A few good looking moments later. Ha ha. Just promise you won't be a prick when I meet you, huh? Carl spoke to Hyper. 
a woman with an East Asian heritage. I wanted to open this interaction with a message that showed appreciation and respect for her Asian heritage, culture and language. Ching Chong Chang, do you want to bang? Hi. Ha, huh. nice bit of casual racism. I'm in Shilla, but not rich. In fact, I'm the poorest guy you'll ever meet. Where are you? You still haven't told me what kind of guys you go for. Tall, short, black, white, Asian, Indian, muscles, skinny, beard, strong jawline. Ha, huh. sorry, I was washing my hair. I prefer a tall guy. I'm not overly fussed. I wouldn't say I have a particular type. I'm in Tottenham. You're really selling yourself to me, huh? To be honest, I'm a terrible human, but I know that I like talking to you. Isn't that the important part? <laughs> so what did your last few boyfriends look like in terms of height, face, race, hair, body, etc? I've only had three boyfriends. The last two played rugby and were well over six foot, white, broad, dark, huh? Maybe I do have a type. What about you? Prior to this conversation, Hyper probably thought that she liked any guy who had confidence and a good personality. Women are often oblivious to their attraction towards physical attractiveness in males. And things get even more intense the more good looking the fake male model profile you use. I want to stick it in you. Damn, I don't usually respond to messages like that but you're way too sexy to ignore, huh? What's your number, gorgeous? Nine, one, seven, six. Women everywhere respond the same. Hey. Give me a number now. Shouldn't we get to know each other first? We can get to know each other when I'm fucking you. I'm not like others. Give me a number and we will see what happens. Um, but just because you are so fucking hot. Zero seven. It literally became an administrative nightmare trying to reply to women and document, screenshot, and organize the results. At times, I forgot to reply to certain women because of time constraints and a backlog of received messages. We'll take a closer look at the conversations you've seen here and more throughout the show. Women often say that confidence, a great personality and game are the most attractive traits in a man. But what they say and how they behave have been proven in behavioural studies to be two different things. Frank L. Connor dropped some uncomfortable truths in his talk on the psychology of love. The last criteria that I want to talk about, and we don't want to, it's another one of these things, well, I'm attracted to their personality. Well, no. What we're attract, we are attracted to attractiveness. Babies spend more time looking at culturally attractive faces than unattractive faces. People who are artificially disfigured, and in fact, if we had somebody in this room right now, and I took in, you know, a theater department and had them artificially disfigured, and they were sitting here, people wouldn't sit around them. People sitting on a, on a, on this experiment was done in New York, having people on a, on a, a, on a subway train, and they had, you know, like a big scar or something, people would not sit by them. We don't, we, we, are, we migrate towards attractive people. Now, what does that mean? Well, there is culturally attractive, you know, some of these folks here. And they're popular because they're culturally attractive. In fact, we associate attractiveness with all positive qualities. We assume that attractive people are smarter. We assume that attractive people um, uh, do better things for the world, that they get in trouble less. In fact, we assume that they are less promiscuous. In every study that's been done, it shows that we believe that ugly people actually have sex in an in a, uh, inappropriate way more than attractive people. So we attribute all good things to attractive people, which is why they're more successful because we, well, they should be, right? Now, what does attractiveness mean though? Because there is a cultural norm that you have a face that is symmetrical, that both sides are essentially the same. Um, high cheekbones, small nose in proportion to your face, you have an attractive mouth. And there's a slight variation between men and women. And here's what's interesting. When you do surveys of women and you, men and women, men are right up front in placing attractiveness in, in their top three. Women place it lower on their scale, five, six, seven, eight. But in fact, when you evaluate women's behavior, it's no different than men. So women say attractiveness doesn't matter, but in fact, when you evaluate their behavior, it does. 
Frank L. Connor's last statement is an example of red pill truth. Red pill thinking is embracing the sometimes painful truth. The blue pill is blissful ignorance. Blue pill thinking is naively trying to see the best in mankind, circumstances and forces. The red pill is hard to deal with, is often offensive and is usually taboo. The red pill makes people confrontational, upset and invokes denial. The blue pill is comforting, encouraging and inspires hope, even if unwarranted. The terms come from the Matrix movies in which the blue pill will return Neo to his everyday life, unaware of the harsh truth of reality, but the red pill will give him awareness of the truth. For instance, asking a woman if you're good looking if you aren't is sure to elicit a comforting blue pill response. You're okay. You're average looking. There's nothing wrong with you. Etc. Red pilled ways of figuring out if a woman finds you good looking include Has she ever called you attractive, hot, or good looking unprovoked? Is she flirty with you? Does she talk to you beyond what's necessary? Has she made it easy for you to be intimate with her? An article in the UK's Daily Telegraph reads. Fifty Shades of Subterfuge, Rape Charges as Male Model Offering Sex in Dark Turns Out to Be Balding 68-Year-Old A Frenchman Masquerading as a 37-Year-Old Male Model Offering Women Fifty Shades of Grey Type Sex Dates in the Dark Is Facing Rape Charges After They Belatedly Discovered He Was a Short, Fat and Balding 68-Year-Old a man calling himself Anthony LaRoche attracted much female interest on several dating websites after depicting himself as a young mysterious Prince Charming with a photo highlighting his smouldering gaze, square jaw and designer stubble. Adding spice to the proceedings, Anthony proposed a blind date in which the two total strangers had sex in the dark on their first encounter at his flat in Nice, southern France. One such date, known only as Sylvie, 40, told police that she fell for the good-looking man with brown hair and blue eyes after coming across his profile on dating site Zusk. After a steamy text message exchange last year, he explained he wanted to play a game like in Fifty Shades of Grey to make things more exciting. Le Parisien newspaper cites her as saying, Once inside his dark flat, she was ordered to don a blindfold and then join Anthony in the bedroom. After having sex and despite his reticence to turn on the lights, she flicked the switch to find herself in bed with a man of around 65 with glasses, balding and all wrinkly, she is cited as saying. He didn't correspond at all to the photo. I felt total disgust. A second alleged victim known only as Layla had a similar experience. After sex, he didn't want me to take off the blindfold. When I insisted, he got angry. I ended up seeing his silhouette in the dark. He was old, pot-bellied, with a big nose. Police arrested the 68-year-old man, known only as Michel, on March 17, placing him under formal investigation for rape by surprise. His lawyer, Laurent Poumared, said at no time did his client force the women to have sex. Rape implies the absence of consent. Police subsequently discovered that two other women had filed similar legal complaints in 2009 and 2013. A quick note, before you say that the model that Michelle used wasn't that attractive, bear in mind that the average woman by 40 years old has experienced considerable loss in sexual market value and physical attractiveness. The first woman, Sylvie, was 40, so likely she would have considered herself lucky to snag the male model in the photo. The other woman may also have been middle-aged. You've been told that women are emotional and only care about the mood you create. That's blue pill bullshit. The women were so outraged by this man's looks that they considered he's misleading them as rape. Notice how they only considered it rape after they discovered that the man wasn't attractive? What does this mean? That a woman's perception of an encounter or experience with a man is largely dictated by how good looking she thinks he is. As you'll learn throughout this show, women often treat men according to their looks, money and status.
getting the truth about looks from women isn't easy, as Professor Frank L. Connor said earlier. So women say attractiveness doesn't matter, but in fact, when you evaluate their behavior, it does. Whether it be due to women's nurturing nature, a fear of being seen as shallow, or an evolutionary fear of causing confrontation and thus being vulnerable, what women say is attractive and what women say about attraction can not always be taken as what they personally really feel. Directly asking a woman what makes a man attractive will net you abstract responses such as Confidence. Someone who can make me laugh. A good personality. Directly asking a woman if you're attractive, if you're average looking or below, will net you responses such as You look fine. You're average. There's nothing wrong with your looks or some of the most blue-pilled words of comfort ever. The right girl will come along when you stop looking. Rarely will a woman that you get along with call you unattractive to your face. This is likely the same mechanism that makes women soft reject guys, more often than not, via lines like, I have a boyfriend. I don't have a phone. No, you give me your number. I wouldn't want to ruin our friendship. But I don't know you. As opposed to the brutal truth, I'm not attracted to you. If you have a female friend, the likelihood is that she likes your personality. So ask yourself, why hasn't she expressed sexual interest in you? So it's women's behavior and how women treat men when there is no fear of judgment and no repercussions for discussing their tastes that indicate women's preferences. Here are some women discussing what they find attractive with no fear of judgment. There seems to be some commonalities between what they find attractive. In our experiment, most women chose one of these two guys here as their future husband. But when looking for a one-night stand, they tended to go for this guy here. And there's a good scientific reason for their choice. Why do you find these guys attractive? I like the cheekbones and the jaw. He is definitely like with a strong jawline. The stubble, the eyes, the jaw. Yeah. He's got a little the bit eyes. darker eyes. I can actually imagine he's quite uh, false for your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Women find these things attractive because they're all signs of high testosterone, which means that the man is healthy and strong. We tend to think it's men who are ruled by their biology, but it looks like women aren't so very different after all. So women say attractiveness doesn't matter, but in fact when you evaluate their behavior it does. Highly sought after men tend to have most of the following traits. Face, general leanness and visible bone structure, prominent high cheekbones, short philtrum, thick eyebrows, vertically narrow hunter eyes, eye spacing about an eye's breadth assuming other traits are also above average. Horizontal lower eyelids, neutral or positive canthal tilt. Notice how the outer corner of the eyes of the man on the left are tilted downwards or sag. They have a droopy look. Forward grown lower orbital rims, giving good under eye bone support, ensuring no under eye hollowness. Little to no upper eyelid exposure. A high facial width to height ratio. A compact mid face. The last two traits mentioned a high rather than a low facial width to height ratio, and a compact mid face rather than a long mid face create the opposite or are the antithesis of what's colloquially known as a long horse face. Less nostril show, a nose that isn't too upturned, wide palate, healthy white teeth with no gaps, a healthy bite upper and lower teeth meet. Defined forward growth of the maxilla, mandible and chin. Vertical long ramus. Broad, square, tall, protruding chin. Squarish defined jawline with high hyoid. No under chin fat. Masculine brow ridge. Large skull hair, squarish hairline, thick healthy hair on crown, little to no hairline recession, little to no temple recession, Nord 0 to 1 on the Norwood balding scale, height, 
taller than an average woman. Preferably taller than an average woman wearing heels. Ideally taller than six foot one in the West. Race, phenotype. Despite all these women having albinism, you can tell which is Asian, black or white based on their facial features. Some people will simply not be attracted to certain features that typically characterize a particular phenotype. Today, features seen as Western or even exotic are more widely attractive than those that aren't, such as wider, more bulbous, thicker skin noses in some black and some East Asian people. Which of these black men's noses has wider Western appeal? Another example, non-Western features such as so-called single eyelids in many East Asians. This man had a blepharoplasty to westernize his eyes somewhat. Skin, elastic, supple, youthful, no sun damage, acne free, wrinkle free, pockmark free, small pores. If you want to attract young attractive women, no nasal labial folds, which are permanent smile lines surrounding the nose and mouth, signaling aging. Complexion, even, healthy, youthful, appropriate for your target audience. Body, body fat between 10 to 12%. This is the first step in improving your looks if overweight, as evidenced by this man seen here. Masculine build. Thick neck, upper arms, forearms, wrists. Large frame, broad shouldered. Athleticness. Penis length, 6 inches plus BPEL, 6.8 plus to be way above average. Penis girth, 5 inches plus, 5.5 plus to be way above average. We'll look at these traits in more detail and how you can improve them soon. Coming up. How women treat average and below average looking men. Dag dames, ik ben Sonny, 21 jaar jong en ik kom uit Den Haag. Die tijd die gaat nu in. Oh, 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 wat hard jongens. Wat nou? And how they treat above average looking men. I'm David and I'm from Berkshire. David, you are H-O-T-T-T-T-T-T. I'm struggling to understand why you're single. <laughs> a short, below average looking pickup artist entertains women with game and personality, but then gets rejected based on looks. Today, yelling pineapples and this much fun all the time, I want to invite you guys out. Oh, where? Why do you just give me the death stare? <laughs> the brutal truth from women. So what would it take to get a date for Stu at five feet? We made him a millionaire. No. No? Not for me. Nothing worked. Too? He's too short. He's too short. <laughs> you may know an attractive woman who's dating an average or below average looking man, but what happens when an above average looking guy hits on her? We reveal the outcome in this brutal red pill experiment and look at why women cheat. And more of this. We haven't even begun yet. 